Hey you guys, it's Britt. Today we're here to talk about a TikTok account that I recently came across. And the account name is Bebop in Bebe, and they have almost a million followers on TikTok. And I had some thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so this account is blowing up on TikTok. I have my original outline where I jotted down my notes, and I just pulled up the TikTok now. When I took these notes, it was on May 3rd, so five days ago. At that point in time, they had 827,000 followers. Now they have 919.6 thousand. And that's in obviously just five days. That's a lot of growth, even for TikTok. Now, this account came across my radar because of a subscriber. And she said, you know, you should look into them. And obviously I did, and I was shocked by what I saw. They are currently being managed by a management company. And anytime I see a management company participating in this type of content, I have a lot of concerns just because this um, child, Bebop is the child, she is being used in a way that is unlike a lot of family vloggers that I talk about. This child is being used for dress up, inappropriate role playing, which we'll get into in a second. Um, wearing outfits that would appeal to bad people online. First, let's go over an overview. So in the um, bio, it says fun account variety show. I'm a cool mom. And it shows their email address, which goes to their talent agency, not to them. And the earliest post that I could find was on September 15th, 2021, and it has 2 million views which is crazy when you think about um, less than a year to gain almost a million followers for the fact that this child is being dressed up and used as a kind of a toy. Like this is bizarre. The child's age is somewhat hard to find online, but I did end up finding that she actually participated in some child beauty pageants and the award that she won what i found was november 2021 it was shared that she was in the eight to nine year old group for the miss thankful beauty pageant and she won for the beauty supreme um category for eight to nine year olds and that was last year so i'm gonna guess her age to be around 10, close to 10, maybe give or take. The fact that her mother also has participated in beauty pageants also tells me why, you know, both of them are in heavy makeup in all of their skits. So this is not just a, oh, let's put on makeup for, um, for a TikTok. This is very much something that both of them are very comfortable with. And it's heavy makeup. It's not just lip gloss or something like that and everyone has their own opinion on how much makeup a child should or should not be wearing but I will say based on a lot of other children that I've seen her age on social media she is wearing heavy makeup false eyelashes for pretty much all of the skits that she participates in and all of their videos get good views like 1.6 million, 1 1 1.9, 1.9, 1.4, 1.5, 2.2, 5.7, 7.7, 2.7, 2.6, 2.1, 1.9, 1.9, 2.9, 5.2, 5.4. So their videos, all of them pretty much get over a million views. Some of them get closer to 7 million, some get in between, but they get really good engagement. And the first thing that I wonder is, where is the money going that this child is making? You know, that's, that is always the first question because as we know, kid influencers do not have the same protections that child actors do. And therefore the money that's being made off of them being on social media 
is not legally required to be put into an account that the parents cannot touch. Now the problem with their little skits that they do is that there is a cosplay but there has been a couple of times where the child is in fetish wear like she was dressed up like a police officer at one time and that is not only giving creeps what they want but it's giving it to them on such an elevated level that in my opinion these videos should be banned from TikTok, banned from Instagram and um, it's probably part of the reason that she's not on YouTube because YouTube does have uh, a little bit better guidelines and reporting systems as far as taking this type of content off of their site. Um, TikTok is just some of the stuff that I see on TikTok is like the Wild West, if I'm going to be honest. Now, what I have seen a pattern of on their videos is constantly people think that the child is being held captive or make, being made to do these videos against her will. And what they will do is say, wear yellow in your next video if you need help. And the next video, they're wearing yellow or the daughter's wearing yellow. Um... Wear purple next video if you're kidnapped. They will, they're going to wear purple the next video. People seem to think that this is a cry for help. Oh, this child is definitely being held against her will. I will give you guys my honest opinion on what I think is happening here. The mother is playing into this and having the daughter go along with her because she knows that it's increasing engagement on their videos. So people are going to follow so that they can see the next video and then they're going to see, oh my God, she's wearing yellow. Let me leave another comment. Comments increase engagement. And in my opinion, that's why so many of these videos have a such, uh, they have such a large reach because the mother is playing into people being concerned for the child and, um, you know, she's running the show, she's running the content, and the next video, she'll put her daughter in yellow just so that people will continue talking, they'll continue coming back to watch more videos, and the more views, the more comments, the more money. The other thing that I'll say is regarding people putting these claims out that the child is being held against her will and she's kidnapped or whatever, um, I know that, like I said, TikTok is kind of like the Wild West, but those are very dangerous claims to be placing on people. And, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like these conspiracies that can gain traction and kind of spread like wildfire, these are real people. And unless there's some concrete proof that something bad is happening now, my idea of something bad is just the fact that this child is being exploited for TikTok views. But as far as saying that she's kidnapped or being abused, that's a really, really heavy claim to place on a parent or a guardian without any concrete evidence. And that's what I will say about that. Now, obviously, this uh, TikTok page will use really popular TikTok sounds also in, in order to place in the algorithm and get more views on their videos. Um, so you can see in this video that they have partnered with Jordash. Um, you know, she has partnered with a few different companies and I will say what I said in a video a couple weeks ago. Any brand that is going to partner with a page like this where the child is being used for clicks and views, and especially with a lot of the dangerous conspiracies that are surrounding this page, I don't know why as a company you would place clicks and views over your reputation by aligning yourself with, you know, a page that is utilizing a child that is approximately 10 years old just so that your product can be viewed. To me, that is kind of E. So SDI Talent is the Six Degrees of Influence uh, Talent Agency. They're in California and they do work with, it looks like some minors, which is very alarming, but it says SDI is a full service influencer, marketing, media, and talent ma management agency. We are the leaders in digital campaigns because of our people. We design and execute the campaigns with our vetted content creators, 
to tell stories that engage and impact consumers worldwide. Our team has over 20 years of experience in digital media and entertainment that is leveraged to deliver the most effective campaigns for our clients. When brands want an agency that is creative on the cutting edge and delivers a high level of customer care, they come to Six Degrees of Influence. No one knows the industry better than the SDI team. We deliver campaigns that increase brand awareness and drive sales for our clients. Being nimble and sensitive to emerging trends while also being immersed into the best practices of influencer marketing puts us in a great position to lead the pack. So it also said some other stuff, um, but that's not what I'm really interested in. The thing that I do find really interesting is that brands, whether it's a talent agency or a company like Jordache, are okay with aligning themselves with a influencer that is a minor that is being used for clicks and views. That is not okay. And, um, you know, it's kind of the same thing with select sets, which I'm going to have another video coming on them. Where is the integrity? It seems like in this age of social media, the integrity of so many brands is being exposed just because they want the clicks and views. So, um, you know, it's definitely made me think twice or three times before purchasing from certain brands. And this is why I talk about this kind of stuff, because I know for a lot of you guys, you would never think that Jordash would be partnered with a 10 year old you know, um, or a, a TikToker that's using a 10 year old for clicks and views. That's wild. So that's why I'm here to talk about it. But have you guys heard about this TikTok account? Have you heard of some of the conspiracies? Have you heard of kind of more of the more dangerous claims that's being placed on this page? I would love to know. If this video does well and you guys are interested, I can definitely do a part two and keep an eye on some of their more recent TikToks and see where it goes. But either way, for now, if you like the video, please leave a like in the comments. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.